Hello, beloved. Moses writes concerning certain punishments in our reading today from the book of Leviticus. I'm Pastor Steve Billings, and today is Thursday of the fifth week of Easter, May 2nd, 2024. Let's begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with trumpet sound. Praise Him with lute and harp. Praise Him with tambourine and dance. Praise Him with strings and pipe. Praise Him with sounding cymbals. Praise Him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 633 from Lutheran Service Book, At the Lamb's High Feast We Sing. Today we'll sing stanzas 5 through 8. Mighty victim from the sky, Hell's fierce powers beneath you lie. You have conquered in the fight, You have brought us life and light. Alleluia! Now no more can death appall, Now no more the grave enthrall. You have opened paradise, And your saints in you shall rise. Hallelujah! Easter triumph, Easter joy, This alone can sin destroy. From sin's power, Lord, set us free, Newborn souls in you to be. Hallelujah! Father, who the crown shall give, Savior, by whose death we live, Spirit, guide through all our days, Three in one, your name we praise. Alleluia. Today's reading is from the book of Leviticus, the 24th chapter. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure olive oil beaten for the light, to cause the lamps to burn continually. Without the veil of the testimony and the tabernacle of the congregation shall Aaron order it from the evening unto the morning before the Lord continually. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. He shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the Lord continually. And thou shalt take fine flour, and bake twelve cakes thereof, two tenth deals shall be in one cake. And thou shalt set them in two rows, six on a row, upon the pure table before the Lord. And thou shalt put pure frankincense upon each row, that it may be on the bread for a memorial, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Every Sabbath he shall set it in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. And it shall be Aaron's and his sons, and they shall eat it in the holy place, for it is most holy unto him of the offerings of the Lord made by fire by a perpetual statute. And the son of an Israelitish woman, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the children of Israel, and this son of the Israelitish woman and a man of Israel strove together in the camp. 
And the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed. And they brought him unto Moses. And his mother's name was Shelemith, the daughter of Debri of the tribe of Dan. And they put him in ward, that the mind of the Lord might be showed them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring forth him that hath cursed without the camp, and let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head, and let all the congregation stone him. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curseth his God shall bear his sin. And he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death, and all the congregation shall certainly stone him, as well as the stranger, as he that is born in the land, when he blasphemeth the name of the Lord, shall be put to death. And he that killeth any man shall surely be put to death, and he that killeth a beast shall make it good, beast for beast. And if a man cause a blemish in his neighbor, as he hath done, so shall it be done to him, breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he hath caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done to him again. And he that killeth a beast, he shall restore it. And he that killeth a man, he shall be put to death. Ye shall have one manner of law, as well for the stranger as for one of your own country. For I am the Lord your God. And Moses spake to the children of Israel, that they should bring forth him that had cursed out of the camp, and stone him with stones. And the children of Israel did, as the Lord commanded Moses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we remember and thank God for St. Athanasius of Alexandria, pastor and confessor. We turn again to Celebrating the Saints by William Whedon. 
Athanasius, likely born around A.D. 295, was serving as a deacon in the Church of Alexandria in Egypt when he first encountered the presbyter Arius. Arius preached that the Son of the Father was not eternal, but rather the first, highest, and noblest creature. Arius's watchword was, There was when he wasn't. Against this heresy, which still thrives today among Jehovah's Witnesses, Athanasius became a valiant defender. In A.D. 325, he attended the First Council of Nicaea with his bishop, Alexander. Here, Arianism was flatly condemned. Our Lord was confessed to be of one substance with the Father, as we still say today in the creed that originated from this council. The Arian party did not readily give up. After Alexander died, Athanasius was appointed his successor. The new bishop, however, met bitter and lasting opposition. He was exiled to the west, and even though vindicated by a synod in Rome, he continued to be out of favor with the emperor and in the east. After some years, he was allowed to return to Alexandria and resume his work. Yet after ten years, mostly devoid of conflict in which the great man wrote, visited, and cared for his large flock, trouble stirred again. Forced to flee, Athanasius spent time in Libya. Restored again for a while, exiled again for a while, became the pattern of his life. He died this day in 373, having been exiled five times. He spent no less than seventeen years of his long episcopate in disfavor, forced from his church. Yet he would not yield to anyone in the confession of our Lord's true and full divinity. It is no wonder, then, that he is remembered by the moniker Athanasius Contra Mundum, Athanasius Against the World. His theological acumen was already apparent in his little treatise on the incarnation of the Word, written as a young man. By his death has salvation come to all, he wrote, and all creation been ransomed. He is the life of all, and he it is that as a sheep yielded his body to death as a substitute. For the salvation of all, even though the Jews believe it not. His depth of insight only grew during the years of suffering and struggle. Athanasius recorded the history of the Arian controversies, wrote a biography of his dear friend and mentor, St. Anthony, and provided us in his Easter letter of 367, one of the very first attempts we know of to list the authoritative books that compose the biblical canon. He says of them, These are fountains of salvation that they who thirst may be satisfied with the living words they contain. In these alone is proclaimed the doctrine of godliness. Let no man add to these, neither let him take aught from these. Let us pray. O God of truth and mercy, you upheld your servant Athanasius to confess with boldness the Catholic faith against all hostility and resistance. Uphold your church that trusts solely in the grace of your eternal word, who took upon himself our humanity, that we might share his divinity, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We conclude again, as always, with Luther's morning prayer. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. 
Amen. God bless your day, beloved.